Hey everybody, Brad the Guitar just here. Uh, I was just cleaning up the shop here, uh, about to do a video on a couple of amplifiers uh, for a change. And I ran across these two items that I got in a trade deal a while back, and uh, I thought I'd show it to you because they're kind of interesting. Um, this, this is a price guide. Uh, it's a full page, it's actually a poster sized uh, price sheet for Tung Soul tubes in the year 1965. But I kind of wanted to show you a few of the prices on this thing. And also, I wanted to show you this book as well. Um, this is a Tung Soul uh, Bass Connections booklet. And you can get these. This one was printed in 1958. And it's just basically uh, reference diagrams. It has a table of contents and it shows you it shows you the pinouts for all of the major tubes that were out at the time. Pretty much everything on this list should should be in here. The cool thing about it is it gives you um, gives you some similar tubes that are also pinned the same way. So if you know you see here you'll see a, a bunch of different tubes listed with the same pinout. So that kind of gives you an idea of substitutions as well, like a quick on the fly substitution guide. And I've actually used one of these before, but my my the old one that I had is a little bit different. It's smaller. Um, it's laid out a little bit different, but it's essentially the same thing. And I've showed this in a couple of other videos before, uh, and I thought it was just super cool. Um, this is when Tung Soul was uh, based in Newark, New Jersey, and there's still Newark, New Jersey here. Let's see, my old one I think was 1958 also. It just happens to be a... or am I wrong? That's a, No, this one's a 53, so I guess I have two different versions of the same little booklet. How cool is that? But yeah, let's check out some of the prices in this thing. Let's look here at a 5U4, for instance. Apparently in 1965, you could get a 5U4 uh, glass bottle. And that's the big Coke bottle version of the 5U4. That's the old style for $2.10. And that's 1965 money. Looking down through here, I really, I'm actually more interested in kind of the power tubes. There we go. There's a 6BQ5. Okay, essentially that's an EL84. And a match pair of those goes for $5.55. Uh, so they actually, they did have matching service back then. $5.55. And today's money is about $43.46. And interestingly, this is more expensive than uh, you would get today. And the reason it's more expensive is obviously there was more demand for tube stuff in 1965 than there is today. Uh, guitar players, um, you know, and hi-fi enthusiasts are among the last kind of holdouts of tube technology. Let's look at some uh, six, 6L6s. Here we go. A 6L6 GC. That's interesting that they don't. They don't have a. Very interesting, actually, that they don't have a matching service for a 6L6. Maybe their 6L6s were very closely matched off of the line, anyway. But the GC. This is interesting. The 6L6 GC would bring about half, almost half exactly of what the old style 6L6 would bring in. That, that 6L6 is actually the early 6L6, so that's the metal 6L6, the metal can. And it's very interesting that the superior 6L6 glass, um, and this is the glass 6L6, the larger ones that we're accustomed to today, the GCs, would, would only uh, cost you half as much as the metal ones, which everybody today regards as inferior. Presumably because of the metal construction and because they wanted to phase, probably wanted to phase out that line. They were sick of making 6L6s in a, in a metal uh, case. Or maybe they were just running low on inventory and, um, you know, they just wanted good money for their old inventory. I don't know. Uh, that's, that's an interesting thing right there. Very interesting, actually, I think. And the other cool thing is that uh, they did the same thing with the 6V6s. So the regular old style 6v6 in the metal can 
would cost you quite a bit more, actually three times as much in this case, as the new style 6v6 in the glass tube. So very interesting there. I mean, actually, I mean, that's 6v6, that's expensive. Standard 12AX7A, $2.55, now that's a bargain. You can get like JJ 12AX7 tubes or Softec 12AX7 tubes for around, around $12, $13, $14, dollars, somewhere in there. So yeah, I mean, still in the same ballpark. And this would have been a superior tube as well, probably. I mean, it's an American-made tongue sole as opposed to today's uh, Eastern European-made stuff, which which honestly are, is, is good stuff. There's going to come a day when we're going to look back on this as kind of a golden age, I, I believe, of tubes because we have a lot of choices right now and we're kind of taking it for granted. And people... Uh, you know, people look down their noses at some of these c current manufacturers, and uh, you know, some of this is good stuff, man. And you're gonna, you're gonna wish you could come back to this moment in time, I believe, <laughs> at some point. Uh, some of the other ones, it's interesting. Uh, they have over here in special purpose types. Uh, some of the other main tubes we're used to seeing a lot. 6550s would uh, would uh, bring fourteen dollars and eighty cents for a matched pair. And this is actually uh, the 6550 is a is an industrial version, um, well, more or less an industrial version, it's an industrial alternative to a 6L6. 5881 is kind of the same sort of thing. Um, the tongue sole 5881s are are very very good tubes. Eleven bucks for a pair of those at the time. Here's some of the other tube types you, you definitely would have wanted to invest in. They ask an industrial version price there at $6.60. That's interesting. A 7027 you could get for $6.60. But the, what was the 6L6? The regular 6L6 GC was $4.35. But the metal can one was still more expensive than the industrial glass bottle 7027 at $8.60. So $2 higher. That's just weird. Um, 7189s, that is an industrial uh, version, a higher, actually has higher plate dissipations um, for a 6BQ5. And those were used in some uh, some applications where you know they wanted to get more headroom out of an amp, such as in uh, hi fi stereos. Uh, 7199, man, I'd sure like to go back and get a bunch of those. Those are getting very scarce now. And they're used a lot in old Gibson amps at $4.70. Uh, this is a triode and pentode in one in envelope, or envelope, however you want to say it. Um, whichever way I say it, somebody will rag me for it. <laughs> so I better say it both ways. $4.70. Seems like a bargain, but that would still be $36.80 if you wanted to spring for a new $71.99. So that was never... A cheap tube and that probably explains right there why Gibson stopped using them um, that's a very expensive tube I mean for a preamp tube I mean you, when you look at your other the other choices they had four dollars and seventy cents um, it just it doesn't make it I mean that's almost power tube kind of pricing but a 7025, look at that, a 7025 for 295 looks really attractive. You just use two triodes instead of a triode pentode in that first position, like they were doing in some of their old amps. I mean, yeah, it makes perfect sense why they would stop doing that. And they also used the 6EU7 uh, quite a bit over here, two dollars and ninety cents. I wonder why they wonder why they stopped doing that. Well, around 1965, actually around 1965 or so is when they did kind of phase out the 6EU7 use. Uh, they used it through the early 60s. 6EU7s were quite prevalent in Gibson amplifiers um, for the first, uh, well, for the preamp in general. Uh, they used it a lot. Um, but a 12AX7 uh, those are a few cents cheaper. Yeah, so two dollars ninety cents as compared to two dollars and fifty-five cents. So I mean, it's just it's just economics. 
And plus the 12 AX7 is a more versatile tube uh, because you can wire it in either 6 or 12 volt configurations if you wanted. So it's it made more sense to stock up on a 12 AX7 when it's cheaper for one. Um, and also, you know, when it's a little more flexible. So later on, if you you know chose to do a different design, um, it would accommodate the different design and have some flexibility. So, I mean, even the let's see, even the 12 AU, two dollars and forty five cents. So, yeah, I mean, you're you're saving. That's a that's a lot of money when you're talking about an amp a, a company that's trying to build amps and stay afloat and you know pay somebody to make them in the US and those kinds of pressures were already uh, starting to be felt uh, toward the late 60s with imports Japanese imports so you know when you're trying to stay afloat every little penny counts so anyway yeah I thought you might enjoy uh, looking at this stuff I just kinda ran across it and thought it was kinda cool so um, anyway hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the videos and for now y'all take care